morning. Well, again, it's morning here in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. <coughs> Excuse me, actually Poland, Ohio, because I'm at work. I'm at the shop. It's about 7.43-ish, somewhere in there. Um, just want to do a little update on the uh, couple things. On the GTO group build that I'm on Facebook. So it's not really a YouTube thing, but for me it is. Okay, what have I done? Um, well, I went ahead and sanded. Come on, focus. Sanded all this area. So the grill sits up higher, and I got that looking better. That core support's going to come out of there with the uh, post. But I got the body sanded. I removed the door handles and the door locks. I'm going to replace those with some actual separate pieces. I'll probably just use decals for the locks and actual separate handles. Got rid of the Pontiac logo between there. I opened up these tail lights a little bit. I still got to clean them up just a little bit, but the lenses fit now. Uh, they didn't fit bad, but now they'll fit better. I got that, and I found a guy parting out on eBay. This is the chassis from the 66 uh, Ravel GTO. So I started building it last night. Now, the only bad thing is this guy shipped it in, of all things, a padded envelope. Ignore that. That wasn't glued on yet. Um, yeah, he glued it. Let me see. We sent it. Yeah, right here. I don't know if you could see it or not. There's the crack. See it right there? He sent this and the rest of the parts in a padded envelope. So I get it out, and of course, I pick it up. I'm like, this is flopping around. It, it's cracked there, and it's also cracked over here a little bit. So luckily, I was able to glue it all back together, and a lot of the rest of the suspension helps reinforce it. But I definitely uh, got to message him and tell him, don't ship parts in a padded envelope, you idiot. But that chassis is going to go into this body. The wheelbase and everything is the same. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, I mean, it's all good there. But the only thing is, this one is wider right in here. So I'm going to have to dremel down those fender wells so it fits in there. But that'll give me a much better chassis for the GTO. So that's where the GTO is at this moment in time. And here's the rest of the parts. It was like the chassis and like the engine base stuff. So here's a, another firewall. Uh... There's a core support in here too, I think. I might have left that on my table at home. No, it's here. There's a core support. Um, there's a radiator and there's some other stuff. like a battery and master cylinder, the steering column with the box, uh, the exhaust, which I probably won't be using the exhaust because I'm going to be using... This is the engine from the AMT uh, Catalina Super Duty, the drag car. Drag car, street car, uh, yes. So it's got the header, so it's going to have this engine, which is supposed to be a 421, but hell, it could be any of those engines technically, but you can see it has the modified oil pan. They have these little weld seams where they looks like they enlarged it for the drag racing. i got to clean up the block a little before I paint it, but going to make it kind of like a, uh, you know, a super stock car or something like that. I haven't decided on color or colors yet, but that will happen soon. It's going to get a nice basic color. And what else do I got in here? Oh, there's the rest of the suspension for the goat. I got the rear end kind of temporarily somewhat glued together. And uh, But yeah, the GTO, it's going to be... I got till July something on that, July 6th, I think, so I'm not really... In a major hurry. Come on, fingers. Okay, here we go. And I got this engine. This is a resin from Texas 3D Customs. This is a uh, newer Boss 302 engine. I got it assembled. Well, some of it. Show you where I'm going on this. This is for the USAC. Uh, the 55 Ford. This is supposed to be 124th. And it is awful big, so I think it is. And there's the engine cover slash intake. I'm going to have to fab up a 
one of those conical air cleaners and maybe a you know a elbow and like so it has cold air over here uh but anyhow there's that and uh painted it like a silver and aluminum color but these valve covers are normally black i'm going to do them in the body color of the truck and then with the intake i'm going to do the same kind of thing i'm going to do these outer covers in black and the main intake in the body color so it'll have a contrast to it let me tell you something i painted the uh, oil pan black because i saw pictures of the real thing and if you see there there's a chip in the flange i'm just going to use some black paint and just touch that up let me tell you what happened um i put some super glue on the bottom of the engine to glue the pan on and any other time my super glue lately has setup time you know usually you have the time to set it and move it around i set this thing on and a good thing i set it on fairly straight it stuck and i mean stuck hard it you know i've sat down there and it went Toot. i'm like trying to move it. i'm like what the hell so i took my exacto and i wedged it under there thinking yeah it's still fresh it's still wet i could pop it right off there nope it's slightly to one side of the block but See how it's to the right? It should be a little more to the left there, but no one's going to see it when it's sitting down the engine bay. So I'm like, I've never had it set that quickly. It always gives me a little time. Nope, not this time it didn't. <laughs> it's like instant. But yeah, that's a couple projects there. I'm going to kind of mess with that in between other things that work today if I have a chance. Um, and then... Let's go to another subject entirely. This. I needed to get paint yesterday, so I went up to the hobby shop slash hardware store up in Howland, uh, Andrews, which is about 25 minutes away from where I'm working. The reason I went there was the hobby shop I normally go to closes at 3 every day. Uh, I could run on my lunch hour, but that's really hectic. I mean, that takes up a good part of my lunch hour to run out there, get something, and get back here. And still eat if I want. So I said, well, you know, they're open till 6. So I headed up there to get some paint for the USAC project. And um, I got this. This is a 132nd snap kit. And the reason I got this was those that you've seen that I bought that T-Bird uh, 132nd scale kit for the... Uh, whatchamacall, for the small scale group build. Well, let's just say the T-Bird's never getting finished. Why not? <laughs> well, I got the body repaired. If you remember, it had that crack in the back. Well, it had two cracks in the back, in fact. Look at this. It's orange on the box, but it's blue in the side. Doesn't matter. I'm painting it. Anyhow, I got it glued together. I got it puttied, I finally sanded it, and in sanding it, I cracked it, some, well not even cracked it some more, but I re-cracked what I repaired, so I had to repair it again, re-putty it again, re-sand it again, because I'll use this body to demonstrate, it was cracked along here, right along the, the fin and the trunk seam on that T-Bird, so I got it glued and just you know, even if I braced my fingers carefully and sanded on it, it cracked. I'm like, oh my God, it, the plastic would not adhere. Because I tried model adhesive and I tried uh, crazy glues. I finally got it and yesterday I got it nice. I had to rescribe the trunk lines and stuff like that. Well, anyhow, I went to put the fender skirts on. So I glue in the mom and you got to put a little pressure. So I'm holding the body like this as it sets up. And I tilted the body up, just, you know, to see how it looks. And I heard a snap, and it cracked all the way across there again. And here's the, I'm holding this part of the body, and the other part, is part just sitting there dangling. I'm like, that's it. Crunch, and into the trash can it went. So, I, I was pissed. I'm like, what the hell, really? Because not only did that, did that break, this, if you remember right, it was missing this vent window. No big deal. I can glue a piece of plastic. It broke here. I glued it. It broke again. I glued it. 
just handling the body like this. And, you know, when you sand a kit, you've got to put a certain amount of pressure, you know, on being gentle as I can with it. So I'm sanding. It cracked again on this side. So both pillars were broken. So I got them glued. I'm, I'm trying to handle the kit as gently as possible. I can't believe just picking it up like this, tilting it, just cracked it, just from the weight of the body. That thing was made out of the most brittle plastic I've ever seen. However, it had no mold lines. It had no sink marks. Unlike this, it's got a couple sink marks. And these are going to be going. So this is my replacement kit for the uh, small scale group build. It got a little bit, you know, a little putty and sanding, but decals will also hide that. But these are wings. If you look on the box art, and all these funny car kits have it, have these damn wings off of them, which just look ridiculous. So I'm going to definitely uh, fill that and sand that out of there. You know, and get rid of those wings, because I don't think real funny cars ever had those. I mean, not that I know of. But, yeah, they had a few. They had the Dodge, what were they, a Duster. They had this one. A couple others there. But I got this one. You know, I may or may not use the decals that come with it. You know, I may not. I may. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But it's just a basic 132 old snap kit. I mean, the chassis is pretty much, as you can see, already assembled. But it'll be a fun build. The T-Bird, well, I got a chassis and interior I could sell to somebody or use it as a swap meet, or who knows, I might find one of those bodies at a swap meet in a couple weeks and uh, go from there. But yeah, so that's going to be the build. Yeah, see this wing? I mean, as far as I know, I've never seen that on a real car. And they all have it, because they have these pictures on the back side of the boxes here. These are the old monogram kits. Now They're now Atlantis. But see, wing, wing, and wing. Um, yeah, they had this duster, and I think they had this one here, the Mustang. I didn't see the charger, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it, it was a good price. So I was like, okay, because I could order another T-Bird kit. They're still out there, but I'm just afraid I'm too, they all that brittle. If anybody has any of those Revell 132nd scale kits, the T-Bird, the uh, Impala, and the Cadillac, uh, both of those were 59s, by the way, and the T-Bird's a 63. If anybody has those, let me know. I mean, I never built, uh, built or bought them back in the day because they were 132nd. And, um, you know, they're from 1985. I don't know if this plastic was a was you know, exposed to extreme heat or extreme cold at one time, made it more brittle than normal. It was definitely a different texture plastic. Like I said, there were no mold lines on it. It was beautiful. <clears throat> I mean, I could have, if I didn't have to repair that crack, I wouldn't even have to paint it. I could have just bare metal it and be done because it was shiny. It was nice, but um, like I said, brittle as hell. I've never had a model just break in my hands. And um, yeah. Uh, it was frustrating, to say the least. I hate doing that. I really do. But, you know, be that close and have it break that simply. I mean, I could see if it broke if I dropped it. If I was rough handling it, it would break. Okay, I get that. But merely rotating the body and looking at it and it snapped, I'm like, okay, that's it. I've had enough. So, <laughs> oh, who knows? You know, but anyhow... Okay, well, oh, in about four minutes, it's time for me to <coughs> start my day. So, I'm going to do that. and Hopefully, maybe on my lunch break, try to get some of this, you know, messed with. Not this one so much, but uh, maybe some of this other. So, at least some primer here and some masking and painting here. But I just wanted to show you where I'm at on that. And um, that's it. So, talk to you later. Bye-bye.